Hey, welcome back y'all. In today's exciting video, we're gonna be replacing the pool pump motor. Man, we're just having a great time around here, you know? We've had this pool almost four years. And about 10 or 11 months ago, I think I spent like $500 replacing the booster pump. You know, that's the thing that runs my pool vacuum or my pool cleaner. Well, here we are at the uh, four year mark, almost four years. Today I spent $475 for a motor and a seal kit because this uh, old Hayward pump, the super pump quit working. Man, I, I am loving this pool life. This is the worst my pool has ever looked. It's never been so dirty. I keep this thing open year round and even in the winter time, I keep it clean. I'm out here almost every day cleaning this thing got a few frogs floating around in there this thing is disgusting my pool pump quit working yesterday morning so it's been about a day and a half now that this thing hasn't worked all right first thing we did open our panel i've got all the breakers turned off now we need to disconnect this ground right here see it goes through the motor here flathead screwdriver Loosen it up. Pull the ground out. I'm gonna loosen this up. It is really hot out here and really windy. It's kind of weird. We're just gonna pull this ground wire right out of here. I got my ground wire just kind of stuck over here out of the way. I think now I probably need to turn this, like close the uh, close the plumbing up. So for mine, I'm gonna turn it like that and that will close this off. And then we'll go up here, push this around till it says closed. We don't really know what we're doing here. We're just kind of figuring out as we go along. Next, we're gonna take the motor off. So I got a 14 millimeter socket See if we can start breaking. Oh yeah, that's very loose. I'm assuming when I crack this open, there's gonna be all kind of water coming out of here. Oh, whoa, whoa, okay. Yeah, it looks like I just peed all over myself. I got the bolts loose, so we'll just pull them out. Stick them over here to the side. And one down here. I don't know if I can do this with one hand. Oh, okay. There we go. Just pull this thing back. Okay. Let's see, does this just come off of here? All right. This looks okay. I mean, there's a seal right there. There's a seal right here. That's probably one of them we're gonna replace. Got me an old tote lid here to kneel down on this ground. It's kind of wet. I'm gonna use a screwdriver and take some bolts out of the back of this thing so we can unhook the wiring. I got these two bolts loose. Okay. Pull the cover off there. Well, my voltage meter is not working. I'm guessing maybe the battery's dead. I've owned this thing probably 10 years or more. Never replaced the battery. Never had a problem with it. So we're just gonna go ahead and <laughs> disconnect this. Uh, you know, something happens. I've told my wife to marry for money next time. I do have all the breakers turned off. So let's loosen this thing up. Okay, we got that out of there. Now we're gonna disconnect the ground screw here. And unhook 
these. Okay. So you gotta put a, a wrench, 7 16 wrench on this shaft. I actually had to loosen up this capacitor right here, this screw. I had to loosen that up in order to get the wrench back there. And now I should be able to, the wrench will hold the shaft in the middle and I should be able to loosen this up. I was finally able to break this impeller free. I had to use this, my oil filter wrench. I was uh, very careful because this is plastic. I didn't want to break it. Probably would have been good to have maybe a strap wrench. Anyway, we got this thing loose. And of course the wrench is holding the shaft. Now this is one of the seals that we're gonna replace. And we just pull this off. That's another seal to replace. I'm gonna unbolt this because I have to put it on the new motor. You can see the inside of this is all wet. So I'm guessing this seal was leaking, allowing water to get in here. And if you look down in here, there's a lot of rust and corrosion. And I'm sure it just got all down into that motor. I'm using this 14 millimeter socket, taking these bolts out. A couple of these are pretty tough to get out. I, I was thinking maybe because of the corrosion, I don't know if that's corrosion or thread locker. No, that's corrosion. Bunch of white powder coming out of this hole. I'll try to pull this plate off of here. motor why don't they make these motors with long extended shafts why do they have to mount directly to where the water is if the shaft was longer you know when this over here the the pump and whatever when it starts leaking it won't even get in contact with the motor really i mean this this could be redesigned i know they could build this and design it in a way that this wouldn't happen. But because they design it like this, they can keep selling replacement parts. I'm gonna find something to clean this up with before I mount it onto the new motor. I used this little brush here, it's pretty stiff, and I just scrubbed it. And I think that's pretty good. I'm not even gonna clean this thing. I could put maybe some super clean or something on it, but I, I don't know, I think it's okay. I've got the back put back on this motor here. I'm gonna put this in my basement. I still have the other booster pump that I replaced and I'm gonna maybe see if I can get somebody to rebuild these for a lot cheaper than buying a new one. And then I can just have them extra ready to go when I need them again. Look at this beautiful brand new motor. Now this is a Century, it's not a Hayward because they quit making the super pump Hayward. I don't know why, now they've switched to like a variable speed which is twice as expensive so most people when they have to replace that super pump they get this model here the century so we're going to start putting this thing back together i'm assuming this is going to be the top because that's where the ground goes and uh that's where the label goes and conveniently this little plate says top i think we'll do this upside down so this is going to be the top of the motor and this says top. Maybe I'll give these a quick little scrub with the brush. Tighten this down. 
It is so windy out here today. I don't understand. It's not supposed to rain for a week. Got some spider webs and gunk in here, so I'm gonna brush it out real quick. It is time to crack open this seal kit and start replacing seals. This is gonna be the first one. I guess this is your shaft seal. Not really sure what I'm doing here, but uh, we're gonna try a wrench. Maybe we can just pull this thing out. I mean, this is plastic. I don't wanna be too rough on it. If I start banging away on the other side here, I'm not sure. What? Oh, there we go, okay. I'm gonna use a paper towel and just kind of clean this up. It's, it's wet in here. My seal kit came with this lube and I've been putting it around this thing, the seal, with my dirty fingers. Push it down in here. That looks good. Should I go ahead and take this off? It's got like a little rubber tip to protect the threads there, uh, I guess. All right, make sure we put this on the right way. Okay, it says top. And this is the top. Just like that. Now we need to replace this seal for the impeller. Well, that just slid right off of there. It looks like part of the seal is still stuck on here. This metal piece here. So I need to try to get this off of here. Without messing this thing up. Oh, there we go. It's coming off. There we go. Okay. This little rubber piece here, it's got to come off too. Come on. Okay, now we can take our paper towel, clean this up. Here's our brand new seal. That's that little rubber piece that was stuck on from the old one. We're gonna take our magic lube, rub it all over this thing. Now, hopefully this is gonna slide right on here. The metal goes down to this. Very nice. Got my flathead screwdriver. We gotta take this cover off now because we gotta put a wrench on that shaft so we can put the impeller on. You remember how we took this thing apart? I'm gonna loosen up the capacitor just a little bit. To give me more room to get my wrench back here. Now we need to put our impeller on here. How tight do we want it? I'm not gonna tighten it down with a wrench. It was so tight when I took it off of here, but. We're gonna call that good. Pull my wrench out of here. 
tighten the capacitor back down. Spinning this thing now, it it feels almost hard to turn, which I hope is good. I think that means the seal in there is nice and snug, where the other one was worn out. Something I've been doing, if you look down in here, I had a bunch of little trash and sticks and pine needles and stuff kind of wedged up in here. So I've just taken a minute and cleaned everything I could out of here. We're gonna replace this seal. I don't think there's an up or down to it. It's a lot, lot tighter than it was. Yeah, this one's pretty worn out. Why is it so windy today? It's been like this the last couple days. While I've been out here working on this pool motor, I also had somebody out here servicing my HVAC. That was another $379. Two units doing the annual service. One of them was low on refrigerant, of course. Loving life. Spent almost $1,000 today. I got somewhere to be in an hour and a half. We got to hustle up now. So let's start hooking this thing back up. Okay, we'll slide our wires back through here. And we'll thread this on here. You wanna wrap it around the screw so that when you tighten the screw, it pulls the wire up under there. Push this in here. Screw this down. I don't guess it matter which one these are hooked to, does it? We'll put this one here. And this one over here. I'm gonna put our cover back on. We got the cover tight. There's a seal right in here that we're gonna replace. That's pretty, pretty thin and worn out. Here's the new one right out of the kit. I'm gonna try to stuff it down in the hole here. We're gonna go ahead and open up this thing here, this little basket, because I believe I've got another seal for this thing. And I'm sure this basket's pretty nasty. We need to clean it anyway. Yep. Yeah, we got a new seal for this, so let's see if we can. I don't really think it needs one, but it came in the kit so we're gonna go ahead and and use it. I don't think there's an up or down on this, so we're just gonna stuff it in here.
Let's bolt up this motor. Okay, that says top. Can you see that top? That says top. So it just fits right on there. I think these are actually stainless steel, maybe to keep them from rusting. Now we need to hook this ground back up. We gotta hook our ground back up into the box here. I've got my basket cleaned out, it's good enough. I clean this thing usually at least once a week. Sometimes I wash it out with a hose and get it really good. Need to fill this thing up with some water. I should have used a water hose. I didn't realize this was going to take so much water. All right, that's good enough. That'll get it primed up. Whoa, this thing is tight with this new seal on here. Maybe that's a good thing though. Now we're gonna open this valve up. And we'll spin this back around to the filter position if I don't fall off this thing. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty nervous. So we're gonna turn this on and see what happens. First, we'll flip these on. Let me give this a minute for this little thing to boot up. Default menu. Hopefully all my settings are still in here. Monday, here we Oh, we need some salt. Okay, let's turn it on. All right, little doors open, back flow preventer. The pull is running. Pump motor is more quiet than it's been probably in a year. Our salt level is ooh, 2,800. I usually keep it like 3,200 to 3,400. I need to add some salt. So happy that this thing is running again. This water is disgusting. I normally only run this pump uh, 12 hours a day, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. I'm probably gonna run it 24 hours a day for like the next two or three days. And my pool cleaner, it only runs two hours each morning. I'm gonna run it a lot too, probably four or five, six hours a day for the next couple of days, get this thing cleaned up. Uh, at least the water's not cloudy. I do need to add some salt. Need to check all my chemicals, my balance, my water chemistry, whatever. You know what I mean, if you own a pool. So I hate that I had to spend so much money on this. Did I say that already? I don't know. I'm kind of in a hurry because I got to get to my kid's school here in like 30 minutes. I got to clean my tools up and get changed, get cleaned up a little bit. 
So I actually probably spent about $175 more than I could have, right? I mean, I could, I paid $390 for that motor. Good grief. I could have got it for $250 on Amazon, but I would have had to wait five days. They couldn't deliver it until Friday. Today's Monday. What would my pool look like if I didn't run this pump for five days? That water would probably be cloudy and green and disgusting. So I would have saved money on the pump, the pump motor, but I might would have spent $100 in shock and chlorine and, and whatever other chemicals. I'm rushing here. My mind is uh, somewhere else because I got to go. Seal kit, right? I paid 50 freaking dollars for that seal kit. Goodness, I got ripped off. I could have got it for about $30 on Amazon. Now you can get an off-brand for like 14 or 15. Anyway, 50 bucks. But I got it today. I just happened to be off today. Had to get my grill cleaned. I called around to some local uh, plumbing stores and hey, they got them in stock. We'll be happy to rip you off today. But you know, uh, that's, that's what you, that's the price you pay. I wanted to get this done today. I would have just been a nervous wreck. This very expensive investment, sitting here all week with green, ugly, cloudy water. This thing stays open 24 hours, 24 hours, year round, all year round. And I keep it really clean, crystal clear and beautiful, even in the dead of winter. Okay, I gotta get out of here. Hey, if you made it this far in the video, thanks for sticking around. Be sure to subscribe. Thanks for hanging in there with me. I'll see you soon.